Right guys, welcome back. Let's get these um, baking materials set up. So I'm gonna jump back to object level. I'm gonna go into my height field. Okay, I'm going to place down a material network. Okay, and then I'm gonna jump inside that. And here I'm just gonna drop down a simple principal shader. Principal shader is Mantra's Uber shader, like the Arnold standard surface. It's just a shader that does everything. Okay. Um, we're not using any of its functionality. All we're bothered about is these output contexts here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and then go to edit and then collapse selected into material. All right. And I'm going to give this a name Baker. And then double click to jump inside. So what you can see now is Houdini's configured this material to be uh, sort of just a standalone and you can see it's got lots of different outputs coming out. This is what the, the, the renderer is looking at, these surface exports and these displacement exports. So these are the things that, uh, that render once we've processed all the code on the shader. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to introduce those additional attributes that we want to bake out here. So we need to bring those into the shader context and then tell them to export out to the render context or to, to the render engine if you like. Unfortunately, this is pretty simple. We can just put down a bind node, okay? And then reference our attributes that we want to bring in. So water is one, um, jump across. No, we can't do that here. So this water attribute, the one that we're looking at here, we want to export this. And you can see, usually it's set to export never. We want to export this always. And it's going to say, well, what type of content? What is it? What do I do with it? Is it is it a surface? Is it displacement? Is it fog? Is it light shadow? So you can see all these different rendering contexts that it's, it's looking at. Well, this is a, we want to render this out in a surface context because we're interested in its attribute value and we want to see it rather than have the geometry displaced by it. OK, so we, we make sure you're using the correct attribute name here because it's going to look for that attribute on the on the geometry that's being rendered. So we've got water. I'm going to hold down all, make a copy of that. And then what else did we have? Curvature, I think. And again, make sure that's set to always so it exports. And then finally, it was debris, wasn't it? Debris. All right, awesome. So they're all set up. So these. What will happen when this comes to render time, it's gonna look at this, this material node here and it's gonna pick up all these export contexts here and it'll also see that this always flag is set for these attributes and it will add that into uh, the render as well. So almost like AOVs, if you like, um, we're rendering out layers of data um, into our render. So with that material set up, we can apply that to our height field because the bake texture ROP needs uh, a material or a shader that it understands. So I'm going to navigate to that material network and find our baker material. Double click on that. So now we've made that connection with our, our baker material. All right. So that is step one. Okay. And what we're going to do now with this, we can delete that color node. I'm going to go back to my output context. And in the bake texture node, I need to specify that high res object. Okay. So I'm going to find it in the list and it's there, height field. So that's our high, high resolution object. Remember, this is now polygons with point attributes on and a material with those attributes set to export so we can do that and what else it's looking for it's looking for a uv object so it's looking for um what do you want me to bake this information out onto okay so we'll come to that in a second but first let's set up these extra image planes that we want to bake out so in the um, images main you can see it's set to extract image planes so we don't want any of these, although, you know, you could, if you wanted to bake them out, absolutely fine. What we want is some extra image planes here. So I'm going to click plus and then our, the variable that we're looking for on the shader is called water. 
it's a type float and I'm going to give it a name water mask okay so that's our water mask done I'll click plus again for the, the next one which was debris again this is a float I'll give it a name debris mask and one final time we'll add another one uh, which one was this this was curvature wasn't it and again it's a float and then we'll call this curve mask so these are our image planes set up. We don't need to worry about any of these, um, but for testing purposes, you might want to do a, a surface color just to make sure it's working. Like I said, if you if you don't see any of these being rendered out, it means you've forgotten to do something. Um, like I said, it's very fiddly. Um, so just make sure you're stepping through this and you're making sure that all the cases are sens uh, you've got case sensitive names and they're spelt correctly. Um, yeah, because otherwise you'll be tearing your hair out. Right, so let's go fetch this UV object now that we're going to bake out onto, and we know what that is. So if we go back to our object level, turn off our height field, turn on our terrain geometry, you can see we're not getting anything because we've, we've changed the network view so this object merge is no longer working. So let's fix that. So remember, this object merge is bringing in a height field volume. So we need to go grab that height field volume. So I'm just going to jump back into my height field temporarily. And before we convert the height field to polygons, I'm just going to drop down a null and call this HV volume out. So we can reference that in our in our low polygon object okay so we've got our polygons with a material on here just for baking and then we can send this out to our low polygon make sure you put the display flag back on that material node otherwise we'll we won't be able to render to texture so back in our terrain low we can refix our link with that height field volume out and then hopefully it'll process all those and there we go we're back to having our we're back to having our um, low polygon representation okay so with that I'm going to jump up again I'm going to double triple check that I've got everything set correctly so I've got my material with my additional outputs the display flag is on the final node there my low polygon object is set on its display flag at the bottom there with its UV coordinates. It's looking pretty good. Uh, so let's jump across to the bake texture node in the output context. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure I'm getting the right information that I want. So for testing purposes, I'm going to drop the resolution right down to 256 just so it renders out nice and quick. And what I'm expecting to see is um, one, two, three channels of, of data times four for each of the UDIM ch uh, tiles, okay? And also it will probably bl bake out a black diffuse color as well. So let's just see what happens. In this case, I'm going to render it to mPlay, which is uh, the interactive viewer. So I'm going to hit render, and there we go. We've got an error straight away. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because we forgot, see? See? Point proven. <laughs> what we forgot to do is we forgot to reference our UV object. So we need to specify terrain low as our UV object. All right, so hopefully that will stop Houdini getting angry at us. Uh, so with that, let us try one more time. Render to M play. Uh, this usually is pretty quick, so I'll keep the video running. Um, but what it's going to do is going to render. Ah, here we go, right on schedule. It's going to start rendering out those maps that we requested. Um, so I'll give it a second.
there we go all right so that was good because i was worried i might have to edit the video and i cannot be bothered to edit the videos right so let's take a look at what we've got um so it's rendered out four frames so that ties in nicely with our udim tiles if you remember we've got four udim tiles so you can see here we're starting to get um, it's baked out some color information i don't know where it's got that from but we'll ignore that because we're looking at the the c for color channel here but if we select this drop down you can see it's baked out those masks for us that we set up those additional channels all right so if all goes according to plan there's our water mask that has been separated up really neatly into those udim tiles okay uh, there's our debris mask again so four tiles worth and then the curvature mask ah not worked it was going so well <laughs> it was going so well uh, so there's a, there's something wrong with the curvature mask i'm gonna guess it's uh, a spelling mistake on my part so i've misspelled curvature somewhere or you know it's the, the attribute is called something else so I'll do a little bit of investigating with that but two out of three is pretty good <laughs> um, so there we go so we've got those now and you know these are two 256 by 256 they're not really usable so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this over to 1k uh, and then I'm going to point it to my uh, render mask folder all right so on in my project structure i'm going to output all these masks all these masks into a folder called masks and you can see here the um the syntax that we looked at earlier on in the presentation this it's going to call each picture and append that udim tag onto it so it can be read by the uh, by the relevant shaders cool so what i'm going to do with that all set up i'm going to render these out at 1k um, and I'm going to just render to disk and then we'll take a look at how we can import them into uh, Painter and how we can use them. So I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.